In today's Medico Apps Masterclass we will learn about Clostridium difficile. Let's start by looking at the morphology. Clostridium difficile is a gram-positive, rod-shaped, bacteria. It is anaerobic and spore-forming, and the important point here is that the spore formed by Clostridium is subterminal. Here in the diagram you can see, this light portion is the subterminal spores of the bacteria. It is a part of the intestinal microflora in humans and hence, it is spread by fecal-oral transmission. Now as we know Clostridium difficile is a part of intestinal microflora, there are certain risk factors which make the organism pathogenic to humans. The most important pathogenic factor which is responsible for Clostridium difficile to become pathogenic is prolonged antibiotic therapy. Prolonged antibiotics given especially to patient admitted to hospital can lead to pathogenicity of Clostridium difficile. Now if there is a concomitant use of pantoprazole then the risk further increases. Also use of rectal thermometer is associated with pathogenicity and spread of Clostridium difficile. Well most of the antibiotics class, like floxacins, penicillins, cephalosporins, increase the risk of Clostridium difficile pathogenicity. There are two specific classes of antibiotics which have lesser risk associated with pathogenicity of Clostridium difficile. Ticarcillin with clavulinate and piperacillin with tazobactam. And this is one of the important reasons as these are preferred antibiotics in hospitalized patients which may require prolonged antibiotic therapy. So just as a recap, Clostridium difficile is a gram-positive aerobic rod-shaped bacilli with subterminal spores. It is a part of intestinal microflora and, under certain risk factors most importantly, prolonged antibiotics used turns pathogenic. Now let's move forward and look at the virulence factors associated with Clostridium difficile. Essentially, there are two major toxins. Toxin A and toxin B. Out of these, toxin B is more important in pathogenesis. Both these toxins, glycosylate, GDP, binding, proteins, which finally leads to the disruption of cell cytoskeleton. And this ultimately leads to the in the fluid leakage in colon causing whitish yellow plaque formation this yellowish plaque is also called as pseudomembranous colitis so this is the clostridium difficile gram positive anaerobic bacilli and this is what a normal healthy colon looks like and finally this is how pseudomembranous colitis white yellowish plaque looks like on colonscopy once again as a recap there are two toxins Toxin A. Toxin B. Both these toxins, glycosylate GTP binding proteins, which ultimately led to disruption of cell cytoskeleton, which manifests itself as a leakage of fluid, seen as a whitish yellow plaque seen over colon. This whitish yellow plaques over colon is called as pseudomembranous colitis. Finally let's move forward and look at the signs and symptoms for Clostridium difficile infection. So there is watery diarrhea, at least three bowel movements per day, for more than two days, which points towards the diagnosis of colitis. Then there is fever, loss of appetite, nausea, abdominal pain or abdominal tenderness and leukocytosis. Dehydration or even frank bloody stool may be present. So all the symptoms if you see like watery diarrhea, fever and loss of appetite, abdominal pain, blood in feces, leukocytosis. All these symptoms point towards the diagnosis of nonspecific colitis and when present in a patient who has undergone a prolonged antibiotic therapy of more than two or three weeks points towards the diagnosis of Clostridium difficile infection. Moving forward towards the complication and diagnosis of Clostridium difficile. 
there are two major complications. First is toxic megacolon and the second is sepsis. Diagnosis. And for diagnosis, primarily first we have to establish the diagnosis of colitis, that is more than three informed stool per 24 hours for more than two days. And then we can also further confirm our diagnosis by detection of toxin A or toxin B in the stool. And further when we do a colonoscopy, we can see pseudomembrane plaque which is yellowish white over the colon. And there is also a distinct odor in the stool of patient with Clostridium difficile infection. The smell of their stool is like a horse manure. So such kind of smell in stool of a patient who has undergone a long antibiotic therapy, along with symptoms of colitis, points towards the diagnosis of Clostridium difficile. Also we can go for a direct detection of toxin producing Clostridium difficile in stool by polymerase chain reaction or culture. So this is the ways by which we can diagnose Clostridium difficile infection. But the various treatment options that we have. The treatment of choice in mild cases is administration of metronidazole. In severe cases is administration of vancomycin is required. And in very severe cases, surgical intervention may be required, wherein we need to remove the part of colon which is heavily infected. Alternative drugs which can be used is fusidic acid and bacitracin, especially in cases where we cannot use metronidazole or vancomycin because of some allergic reaction or any other reason. Let's end today's Medico Apps Masterclass by looking at the most important points from this Medico Apps Masterclass, which are asked in various PG entrance exams. So regarding morphology, Clostridium difficile is gram-positive, rod-shaped, aerobic and spore-forming bacteria, and the spore formed is subterminal. There was an exam question in NEAT PG in which there was an image of subterminal spore shown and you were asked to name the organism. The risk factors associated are prolonged antibiotic therapy, pantoprazole increases the risk and it is associated with use of rectal thermometer. Then as far as virulence factors is considered, there are two toxins, toxin A and toxin B, out of which toxin B is very important. Both these toxins, glucosylate, GTP binding proteins which led to disruption of cell cytoskeleton, which further led to leakage of fluid and formation of pseudomembranous plaques on colon. When it comes to signs and symptom, it is watery diarrhea and non-specific signs of colitis. These features, when present in patients who has undergone prolonged antibiotic therapy, raise the suspicion of Clostridium difficile infection. For the diagnosis of Clostridium difficile infection, we can first have to establish the diagnosis of three informed stool per 24 hours for two days and then we can go for detection of the toxins in suspected cases or detection of clostridium using PCR or culture. The treatment in mild cases is metronidazole in severe cases is vancomycin. Let's end the masterclass by today's brain teaser question. The brain teaser question for today is clostridium difficile is a facultative aerobic bacteria true or false so if you know the answer to the question write in the comment below do not forget to subscribe to medico apps master class by clicking here once you have subscribed click on the bell icon so that you can get a notification whenever i upload a new medico apps master class Check out this next Medico Apps Masterclass which I feel will be very helpful for you.